Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. Alright, so Bard got a small buff to his passive. Basically when you're auto attacking someone, they'll have a little AoE damage around where they're hitting now, around the target that they're hitting, which is just a very tiny buff to Bard. And he's already a very solid champion. Alright, so Caitlyn got a bunch of bug fixes around like her kit. After her headshot goes off, her next auto attack was delayed more than it should be. And she's gotten kind of a, a series of buffs in the past couple patches, so she's looking quite good, honestly. Alright, so Fiddlesticks got a slight buff to his mana cost on his E, but more importantly is the new jungle item that's coming out, Runic Echoes, is way better on him than Rune Glaive was, because Rune Glaive was just so terrible with Fiddlesticks to use. Alright, so they gave some small nerfs to Gangplank, but since they didn't actually affect his ult at all, he's still going to be kind of ridiculous. The fact that his ulti is so powerful, does so much damage in teamfights, and it's global, just makes it way too strong, and I wish they would just remove the globalness of it and make it just kind of a pretty far range ulti. They gave some buffs to Kha'Zix. His W, the little explosion radius, is bigger, so he can clear waves easier, stuff like that. That doesn't matter too much, I don't think, but the fact that his jump range on the unevolved jump is 100 longer makes him like a lot safer. Like especially if he's played mid, having uh, extra 100 range on a jump away will be like the difference between surviving a gank and getting killed. Morakaiser shield delays a bit slower now. It used to delay 1 second, and now it delays 1.5 seconds, which is actually a very decent buff since it just lets you like stand around, use your shield more often in lane. And now your W can cast on allied minions, which you're not going to be doing too much, but it's nice to have that option. It makes it better, you know, when you're in a solo situation, since you don't have, actually have to have a ally around to cast around. And now his R is changed around quite a bit. So it, normally Mordekaiser would give 80 to his ghost if he got one, but now he gives 80 based on his bonus attack damage, and he's usually not going to have any bonus attack damage since he's usually built AP. So that's just kind of a nerf to how much your ghost hits. And lastly, the damage split. It's instead of 50% initially, and then 50% over 10 seconds, it's only 25% initially. So it's basically just a pretty big nerf to his ulti, honestly, since it has a lot less burst and just more damage over time. All right, so Poppy's been coming up in soul queue quite a bit. Like I see her in jungle quite often. She kind of has a very bad early game, but eventually she just kind of becomes a beast, I guess. <laughs> she's, she's very weird in how she plays, but if she ever gets like a good ulti in a teamfight, the teamfight's completely won. And on this patch, they're just giving her 30 more HP, and they're making her Q just like work a bit like easier for players. So they're just giving her basically small buffs. And I don't think she really needed them, but I guess Riot really wants her to like come into meta. All right, so they gave a few small nerfs to Trundle. They made it so his Q can't affect turrets, so he just takes turrets a little bit slower. They nerfed the mana cost on his E, which is the kind of one that supports especially spam. So it, it just makes their builds a bit less spammable, especially during laning phase. And they added 30 seconds to his ult at rank 1. Before, it was you know, one of the shortest cooldown ults for like any support, so it's it's pretty like usable on cooldown for him. But now it's a bit worse, but it, it doesn't really affect him too much. Also, the mana cost went up 25 for his ult. So basically, they're just like very small nerfs to Trundle. He's been kind of coming up in popularity in the support role a lot and a little bit in the top lane. So they're just kind of toning him down a little bit. All right, so for Rumble, they gave one small buff. They made his collision radius smaller just so he can like fit through creeps. He doesn't creep, creep blocked as much anymore. He used to be pretty fat. He used to have that kind of issue. And he gets 50 more range on his Q, his primary ability, which is very significant. And I think it's a, a needed buff for Rumble, so it's nice. They buff Warlord's Bloodlust, Fervor of Battle, and Deathfire Touch. The, all three of these kind of master keystones weren't really taken just because everyone really wanted Thunderlord's Decree. So they're buffing Warlords, making it from 15% of the damage dealt healing up to 25% of the damage dealt, and the attack speed goes from 20% to 30%. So it's like a very significant buff to Warlord's Bloodlust, but I kind of feel like the fact that it's really bad in laning phase means that people still will continue not to take it. Now, Fervor of Battle, before at late levels, it would do 8 damage a stack, now it does 14 damage a stack, but it only has 8 stacks now instead of 10 stacks, and this is a very, very significant buff to Fervor of Battle, and the fact that it's also quite strong during laning phase means that I think a lot of AD carries will start to move towards this instead of Thunderlords, kind of depending on the AD carry. I think people still will take Thunderlords since that's unchanged. Now lastly, Deathfire Touch got some small buffs, basically just 0.180 bonus ratio and 0.05 ability power bonus ratio, and these are just kind of, they're definitely significant buffs to Deathfire Touch, but I don't really know who, is, who would be taking it. I feel like someone will, but I'm not really sure. So Storm Raider Surge was something no one really ever took because it's super awkward. It gives you a bunch of move speed when you're bursting someone. 
but they're giving it very significant buffs. So they're making it so it's easier to get the proc off, gives 5% more move speed, and most notably gives 75% slow resistance when it's on, which is very huge. And I'm sure we'll make it viable in some rare situations, but it still is, seems super awkward to use. Also, they nerfed down Precision, which is the armor penetration slash magic penetration things that's super OP. And the thing that leads into Thunderlord is kind of the thing that was making Thunderlord so good. And it's still, even though they're nerfing down the armor penetration on it, it's still really good. Like, it's still better than the percent armor penetration you get in the other tree. So people will still want to get it where they can. Like, if they are taking Thunderlords, they're of course going to take it. But it just makes some Thunderlords a less viable option. All right, so Strength of Ages, before, once it got, you got to full cap, it didn't really do anything. Now it gives you 6% uh, of your maximum health restored back when you kill a Siege Minion or a large monster. So just a very slight buff to Strength of Ages. Usually it takes so long to get a fully cap that this doesn't really matter too much. But I don't think this change really affects it much. Now Bond of Stone is getting nerfed down. So before it was 3% doubling to 6%. Now it's just 4% all the time. So f as far as tanky supports go, they're still going to take it like basically 100%. Like what is a Braum going to take besides this master? There's not many much option, but it just hurts them. It just makes them 2% less tanky during laning phase, which is very significant. So it just basically tank supports across the board got slight nerfs. So both of the finished Less Whispers, Lord Dominic's and Mortal Reminder got a buff of 5% more bonus armor penetration, which is just a push in the right direction. Before, a lot of AD carries just wouldn't really get them or they'd get it super late just because it wasn't that powerful and a slight buff is good. Okay, so Io of the Oasis is the, it's the upgrade to the Talisman and they're making it so it has less Manogen now and has 10% more CDR. So it's definitely better now than before, but no one ever took it before and no one's ever gonna take it now. It's not enough of a buff. You're not going to want this. First off, no one goes coin because it's a bad laning item. And second off, if you go coin, you're definitely going to want the other upgrade because getting the move speed is just so much better than having this. All right, so Eye of the Watchers. Again, no one ever went this in the past. And again, they're nerfing the Manogen and giving 10% CDR to it, which is good for it. But the other option, Frost Queen's Claim, is still so much better. They are nerfing Frost Queen's Claim in this patch, but... It's not being nerfed enough to make this viable. Still, no one's going to go this item. All right, so they're nerfing Frost Queen's Gleam. They nerfed the Managen on it by 50%, and they nerfed the slow duration on the Ghost, depending on how close you are to them. So if you're really close to them, it doesn't last very long. And this, these two nerfs are primarily targeted at the mid lane, because this is a support item, but mid laners have been going it a lot just because the, the ghosts are just so OP. They last so long and they slow so much that it's just super easy catches. But as far as supports go, it doesn't affect them as much. Supports who wanted this before will still 100% go it. All right, so on the last patch, basically AD carries would always be going rapid fire cannon over the other three options of Runan's Hurricane, Static Shiv, and Phantom Dancer. And basically this patch is trying to kind of balance them all out. So they're buffing Phantom Dancer by 5% move speed. They're buffing Static Shiv by making it kill minions easier with the proc. They're buffing Runans by 2% move speed. And they're nerfing Fire Cannon by 1% move speed. So they're all just like super slight buffs and nerfs to kind of push people into the direction of the other three items, but probably not enough to make it so that Rapid Fire Cannon will still be the, the cannon of choice. All right, so Runic Echoes is basically a replacement for Runeglaive now, and it's basically Ludin's Echo in a jungle item. And it's, I think, much healthier for the game. Before, the only champions who could really use Runeglaive were Nidalee and Elise. They're like the only AP champions who auto-attack enough to kind of, you know, proc the Runeglaive thing. And I think that was kind of, a, it was a bad item. Now this thing, like Fiddlesticks, Karthus Jungle, basically all of these, if you ever want to play like any random AP jungler, this is going to be much better for them. And also just on even Nidalee and Elise, it, I'm pretty sure this is better than Runeglaive was. So it's definitely going to kind of bring the AP junglers back into the meta. The move speed, 10% is really nice for junglers. It lets them just get around the map, do whatever they want. And the actual active is just a lot better for like team fights than the old one was. All right, so tier two jungle items, they make them cost 50 gold less and give more mana regen, 30% more mana regen. So this just helps out the mage junglers even more, helps out anyone who's gonna have mana issues in the jungle quite a bit. All right, so yellow trinket is being buffed. They're making it so that it has a 30 second less cooldown at level 18 and it scales up to 30 less cooldown. And the 
Farset Alteration, the blue trinket. Now it's 66% of the cooldown. It used to be 50% of the cooldown, which is basically, it's going to have a long S cooldown when you first get it. And then it's going to even out to be the same cooldown it used to be at level 18. All right, so Rapture buff is the Oracle's buff that junglers get from smiting raptors. And in the past, a lot of times it would proc and then you wouldn't actually find the ward because it would proc, you know, it procs before you're actually envisioned to see the ward. And then you kind of think it's like behind you or something, you walk away. And now they're just fixing it up. So you're basically always seeing the ward when it procs, which is nice. It's a good change. All right, so they're making Rift Herald easier to do by lowering the damage on him by 10, which I think is a step in the right direction. I think before, Rift Herald's been basically kind of ignorable. Like, it, it's not bad or anything, but it just hasn't been that important. All right, so they made it so Smite can no longer proc spell effects, which is basically Spell Vamp, Rylize, Lee Sin Spell Vamp, and the new item, Runic Echoes. So you can't, you know, charge up your Runic Echoes, Smite them, proc your Runic Echoes on them. All right, so before, Nasty, like Merc Treads and all that stuff didn't affect Lulu's Whimsy, or turning people into sheeps or whatever she turns them into, and Amumu's ult, it, it just wasn't getting reduced before, and now it does by Tenacity, so it'll just make, it basically just makes Lulu and Amumu slightly worse, that's all. Riot decided to buff the missile speed on LeBlanc's E, the chain. Uh, I really don't see why this change is necessary. I think LeBlanc is already strong in her current state, and even though this is not a huge buff, it's going to make a slight difference in making the E easier land, so um, I don't really have a lot to say. I don't know why Riot made this change. Teemo got two more uh, base damage. Even though Teemo is not really a mid laner, uh, these are some slight changes that are going to affect him in the top lane. His passive can now make him invisible even if he's moving in a brush. It's actually quite useful in the top lane because you're just constantly moving in the brushes. And if people walk in to try to find you and you're invisible, you can always just stay there unless they have some kind of AoE ability where they can spot you. Um, they also buffed his Noxious Trap and gave it slightly longer range. Is this going to mean that you can put your traps or your shrooms from a safer distance? But this is not going to make or break Teemo or really make him viably competitive. I think it's just going to be the players that are playing Teemo before are going to continue to play him, but we're not going to see a whole lot of new players. They nerfed Gangplank's passive a little bit by making the damage tick over 2.5 seconds instead of 1.5 and they lowered the AD ratio a little bit. For mid lane Gangplank, the passive isn't that big of a deal in terms of trading. I think this is going to be more impactful on top lane Gangplank. So for mid, I think Gangplank is still going to be a really strong pick and it's not going to change his viability. The way this nerfs top lane Gangplank is because they like to reapply the passive fast to get a really efficient trade. So what you do is you auto with the passive, you shoot a barrel, and then you auto again. Now since it does damage over 2.5 seconds instead of 1.5 seconds, you're going to be losing out on more damage. Even though the combo doesn't take a full 1.5 seconds, so you didn't get all the damage before, it's still going to be less than before. On Frost Queen's claim, they nerfed the base mana region to match Morello's. They also nerfed the active a bit, so instead of a flat amount of 4 seconds, it's... Um, two to five depending on how far the ghosts go. Obviously this is a slight nerf because it doesn't allow you to just pop it close range and get the full slow. But if you do it from afar and you get a five second slow, that's actually an extreme slow. So I think it's definitely still gonna be a viable item, but maybe we're not gonna see it being abused as much. So there's some interesting PD changes. I actually really like these. They made it so it actually has flat move speed on the item now instead of only having bonus move speed when you're 500 units of an enemy. So that basically means that you can run around the map just as easily as you can with Rapid Fire, Hurricane, Static Shiv. It's it's in the same category. Whereas before, if you bought PD, you'd like basically just lose free move speed by not going the other items. And the other items were strong anyway, so it even it made it even worse to buy PD. But I, I like the changes. Uh, it should be pretty good. I think PD is still in a weird spot though. This definitely helps it. Uh, the 12% less damage to you after hitting someone is... Super hard to notice. Every time I've tried to buy it, I've had some weird stuff go on. Like, I tried to buy it on Vayne one time with Death Dance, just to see if I could super duel people and not take any damage. I ended up just dying immediately in a team fight anyway, so... I don't really know what to think of the item. Tried it out a few times besides that, and it's never really felt like super impactful on, like, why I was winning the game or why I didn't die there or something. I always, like, check the damage reduction from the 12%, it's just like some super low number. Like I had it for 10 minutes and I checked and it was like 200 damage reduced, which super bad. I'd rather have something else at that point. So the uh, changes to the meth are pretty weird. I don't really know why they would do this, but they changed it from basically chunked up 90 damage over the course of five levels, which is 
pretty insane. Like, 90 free damage is just gone. Which is going to be the difference between getting a kill and not. I mean, sometimes they just don't end up standing in the whole thing. So, it might not affect all cases. But it's still just less damage overall. I was kind of already, like, sticking away a bit from MF. Just because of... Her lane phase is good, but it's hard to really finish people off. And then... Uh, her mid game is really weird. Her ulti does so much damage, but it's hard to really get that off because there's so much mobility in the game and like assassins running around your your map with no real gap closer. Like you can get around the map pretty easily, but when you're in actual fights and some guys on you actually have so much trouble getting you off. So this change might just knock her off the planet. Static shivs bonus damage to minions got increased by 45%. So from 75 to 120. Item is still garbage. Just don't bother with buying it over anything else. Not as good as Renon's or Fire Cannon. Still the worst out of those three. I don't really consider Phantom Dancer because nobody buys Phantom Dancer. Uh, the reason why it sucks, that has still hasn't changed. It's good for wave clear, but so is Renon's. It sucks versus champions because it does 30 damage or like 50 damage where before it would do 100. And the other options are just so much more appealing. I mean, Fire Cannon's better for fighting champs. And Runons is better for clearing waves and doing AoE damage. So Static Shiv is really just has no place. Okay, so Death Stance got an increase cost by 100 gold, but they added 10 AD, which is pretty value actually. Usually you have to pay 350 for a longsword to get 10 AD, but in this case they, they buffed it. I think the direction is fine, but Death Stance is just such a worthless item. Uh, it doesn't actually reduce the damage that you take. Really, like really, it, it takes the place of a Mercurial Scimitar or a Bloodthirster, which will do its job way better. I mean, it, it doesn't actually stop you from taking damage, so in that way, why would you pick this item over a uh, Bloodthirster or Mercurial Scimitar, or even a Bork? No competitive ADs by Death Stance, ever. Uh, they're changing Kalissa's Rend to not refund mana for killing a single target. Probably aimed at Ballista, like Rend reset spamming, where you would just constantly be resetting your Rend cooldown. That was really abusive in lane, and one of the biggest reasons why she's strong in lane. I think maybe she'll have mana problems, Pro maybe not. I don't really see like a, a huge, this is a huge nerf, even though it's really annoying. Uh, they did change the mana cost from 40 to 30, so I think overall in trades, Ren will cost 10 more mana. It's still fine, I don't really think it's a huge deal. All right, so this patch just was basically a bunch of small balance changes. There wasn't really anything that was too significant. All of the changes seem like they're going in the right direction on this. Usually there's some things that I'll kind of disagree with, but this just seems a fairly safe patch that's going in the right direction. Not Nothing too like super impactful or too interesting, but a good patch.